sky like I'm Lee Gretzky. Hit the blood from behind every time. Mary, let me weed a little loud. I'm tickling the ebony. Thanks for rolling up. I'm Two Blunt Marley, and this is Certified Pothead. Smoking on one of my late afternoon, early evening spliffs. You know, we about to do Bird Club. We about to take a look at these cannabis conspiracy theories, which I like to call cannabis conspiracy theory. Today's theory involves the sinking of the Titanic. Ahoy, conspiracy theorists and history buffs alike. Let's set sail back to April 14th, 1912. Picture the Titanic. The unsinkable marvel of engineering is gliding through the Atlantic like a giant floating luxury hotel with the crew more relaxed than a clam at high tide. Some claim they were indulging in a bit of green relaxation, the kind of greenery that grows on land, not on seaweed. Could it be that the high seas took on a whole new meaning that night? Did a few puffs of the old peace pipe lead to the tragic sinking of the Titanic? Let's dive in, people. First, here's a riddle for you. I was called unsinkable, a marvel so grand. I set off to sea, the strongest ship in the land. But with nature decree, I couldn't withstand. Tell me, who am I built by a famous hand? Okay, so we're going to say a couple of sailors got a little too toasted and somehow didn't notice the world's biggest ice cube. I mean, wouldn't the captain have called for an extra lookout if they were lighting up instead of lighting the way? Feels like a stretch, or maybe I'm just as foggy as they were. We'll proceed, though. After partaking in the herb of the sea, what's the first thing that happens? Munchies, of course. Imagine the Titanic's crew rummaging through the kitchen like a pack of ravenous seals, pawing at sandwiches, biscuits, and anything else they could find. They probably searched high and low, completely missing that giant iceberg sitting on the horizon like a frozen cannonball. So while the ship plowed ahead at full speed, they were thinking about plowing into some snacks. They weren't avoiding rocks so much as they were hunting for the snack attack. Here's another riddle for you. Though my name means small, I was hard as stone. Lurking in darkness, unnoticed, unknown. Struck by a giant, and claim her as the prize. What am I causing so many's demise? Look, bro, I get it. Snacks are a top priority on any voyage. But are we really thinking they miss an iceberg because they were too busy raiding the pantry? I'm just saying, a floating iceberg is a lot harder to miss than a hidden bag of chips. I don't know, bro. Kind of feels like someone's fishing for reason. Enter the lookout. We'll call him Stoned Bob. Now, Bob's up in the crow's nest presumably scanning the horizon for any signs of danger. But according to this theory, he may have had a vision a little foggier than usual thanks to some herbal remedy. Instead of yelling iceberg ahead, he might have been thinking, is that a really big marshmallow? With the crew blissfully unaware, the Titanic cruised towards the iceberg like a walrus headed straight for a sunbathing spot. When the ship finally got close, Bob might have squinted tilted his head and said hey do you guys see something or is that just me spoiler alert it wasn't just him riddle time i was the one who saw danger too late a jagged white mountain sealing their fate through cold mist appeared yet failed to delay what am i warning missed on that ill-fated day so we sent it our man stone bob was up there in the crow's nest stoned and thought an iceberg was a cloud or something I mean, come on, you have to be higher than a seagull to not notice that. And they say sailors are supposed to be sharp-eyed. I think Bob would have pulled up the anchor on his theory himself if he'd heard it. By the time the iceberg was fully spotted, you'd think the crew would have hit the tide pods to try saving themselves. But nope, according to this wild theory, the crew was too relaxed to react quickly. Communications between the bridge and the lower deck was apparently more muddled than a sailor's compass in a storm. The helmsman may have been too busy contemplating the meaning of life to actually turn the wheel. And the radio operator might have been mistaken warnings for whale song. Imagine the captain asking any news and the crew responding, yeah man, the whales are totally vibing at night. Not quite the kind of SOS you would want 
on the high seas, right? Here's another riddle for you. I was the one whose voice they ignored, sending my message as Dazer's sword. Blah, that was a terrible way to say that sentence. Sending my message as Dazer's sword, yet I was silenced. No heed did they pay. What am I last to call it a day? Okay, so now we're saying that the radio operator so high that he could not tell the difference between a distress signal and a pod of dolphins. Even if he was buzzed, he'd still have to be more laid back than this side of Davy Jones' locker that said to just shrug off an iceberg. I'm calling shenanigans. This theory has a lot more holes in it than the Titanic itself. Finally, we have Captain Smith. Legend has it that Captain Smith was a no-nonsense guy who wouldn't even let a seagull catch him off guard. But if he'd been partaking like the rest of his crew, maybe he'd swapped his usual vigilance for something a little more chill. When the warning finally reached him, instead of saying, full stop, maybe he was more like, let's just ride the wave, man. The ocean will provide? This guy went from captain to cruise director, which considering the circumstances, wasn't the best transition. If Captain Smith was indeed in cannabis cruise control, then maybe he really did say, what's the worst that could happen? Just another day on the high tides, right? I don't really buy this one. Captain Smith was the captain of the unsinkable ship. You think he'd just chill out with the ship's fate hanging by a thread? I mean, it's like saying the captain wouldn't stop for a coffee break in the middle of a storm. But then this theory is flimsier than the Titanic's deck chairs. When it was finally time to abandon ship, did the crew and passengers hop into the lifeboats like they were late for the world's worst wedding? Nope, according to our theory, they took their sweet time drifting towards the lifeboats like a bunch of sea slugs instead of panic. We had more of a chillax vibe going on. Pictures of people leisurely ambling toward the lifeboat saying, We've got time, right? As the Titanic was literally becoming a giant fish tank. By the time they finally got around to lowering the lifeboats, half of them were probably halfway thinking, maybe we'll just wait for the next one. This is getting kind of weird for me. If the Titanic's going down, people would be sprinting to those lifeboats faster than a dolphin dodging a shark. There's no way anyone would be just waiting their turn. Even if they were all mellowed out, they'd be running for their lives once they saw the water coming in. Hey, this theory's kind of wet, my dude. Where do we end up at? Was the Titanic lost because of some herbal misadventures on the high seas? Probably not, but it is sure fun to imagine. Could a few relaxed decisions have contributed to the disaster? Maybe, maybe not. But as this conspiracy sails off into the sunset, it leaves behind a lingering question. How much of history could have been changed if people just stayed a little more anchored to reality? This theory is hilarious. But like, a single iceberg did the Titanic in. Not Celtic green or any other herb of the sea. But hey, keep dreaming. It's just one more shy tale to throw on a pot. The answers to the riddles. The Titanic, an iceberg, the lookout, the wireless operator. I'll see y'all next time, bruh.